Hi, welcome to the Silver Empire Helps Authors Make Money podcast. Um, today is just Morgan. Russell is off uh, watching the kids while I do a special topic podcast for us today. And today we're going to be talking about chronic illness and specifically trying to write with chronic illness because chronic illness tends to affect every part of your life and it can be kind of hard to deal with, especially when you're working freelance or working as a novelist and have to set your own hours and make sure you work rather than someone else dictating it. And um, Tabitha is joining me today to talk about this and I'll let her introduce herself and tell you kind of what she does and then we'll get going. Hi everybody, so I'm Tabitha Britt and I'm the founding editor of Do You Window, which is the first endometriosis magazine in the nation. Um, all of our writers have endometriosis and it's our slogan is it's a no bs magazine so it's very raw very honest um and that's kind of what sets us apart it's real stories from real people who are experiencing everything you are <laughs> i think that's a really amazing project to have a just like a publication just based on one illness so my next question was going to be for um everyone that came and you kind of answered that already but you can go into it is what um, I don't want the whole podcast to be focused on us complaining about what's wrong and everything, but what chronic illness do you struggle with? Um, so I have endometriosis and I also have interstitial cystitis, um, which is a chronic bladder condition um, that makes it very painful to just urinate. Um, it's, it's extremely painful, but my endometriosis gave it to me. Um, they're actually referred to as the evil twins of one another. So oh, no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so got that gift. Um, but that's what I struggle with mainly. And how does that, I mean, we can kind of guess how that does that affect your everyday life and your writing and trying to work? So um, my day job or my normal job, I'm a managing editor but I'm on a remote team, so that helps. But some days it's very hard to get out of bed. It's very hard to um, just when I did work a nine to five, I was going to the bathroom constantly. So definitely being able to work remotely has helped me tremendously. Um, so I can use heating pads or cooling pads or whatever I need to while I work on my computer or while I'm writing. That's good. So I'll talk about myself for just a minute, but not too much because I don't want to make it the me, the me show. Um, I have PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome. And then there are several things that tend to be common that come, you know, in the bag with PCOS and it is hypothyroidism. And um, I'm also insulin resistant. So I have a lot of the like early symptoms of diabetes. Um, and that brings with it for me. Um, I have a lot of tiredness, like exhaustion, um, a lot of insomnia, which totally helps with the exhaustion and some other things like that that make it really hard for me to be productive um, and have the energy to do what I need to do during the day. Um, I don't know if you, Tabitha, play anything like Dungeons or Dragons, but like the example I've heard with it is when you play like a wizard in this game, you have a certain number of spell slots every day that you can use before all your magic is worn out. And like I have two or three spell slots a day that I've got where I can do something and accomplish it. Um, and then once I have used up those spell slots, I'm like done. I can't do anything yet, so I don't have any energy for it. So yeah, and you know, it's pretty obvious how that would affect working, especially since I work for myself. So there's no like looming deadline or boss or anything to be like, well, you really have to sit down and do this today, even though you don't feel like it. Um, and yeah, so that's what I deal with. Um, so, sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry, I just, um, I don't play that game, but I definitely get your, um, what you're getting out there, like the spoon theory or the battery theory. Yeah, um, I have seen spoon theory too. I, I totally get that. And one thing 
that is terrible is chronic fatigue. And I feel like a lot of people don't understand that because they're like, oh, you're just tired. Like, just go take a nap. Or like, and chronic fatigue is just exhaustion. And I totally get that. And it is hard to meet expectations of a boss or to hit deadlines. And um, with me being a journalist and a managing editor, I have constant deadlines and it is exhausting. Yeah, I don't. So, well, I manage, a, I, I manage a publishing company. I'm the editor there and it's books. So it's not quite as like compressed as doing articles. So I at least have the benefit of when I'm writing one of my books or doing something that like, okay, today I can just not do this because I can't manage it. But that is not the case in every, um, in every kind of writing job that you would have. So, okay, so my first question for you, and I think, you know, this is a big takeaway that I want anybody with chronic illness that's watching uh, this podcast to get, is that you, you really have to manage your expectations for yourself and you have to do it fairly, right? You can't set these really high goals every day for what you're going to do because then at the end of the day, you're not going to have done it. And then you're going to feel awful about not having gotten what you wanted to done. And then that's just going to snowball because, you know, you have to, you have to think and decide like, okay, this is really what I want to get done, but this is actually what I am capable of doing. And you have to kind of find that balance. Um, or I think your mental health suffers where you feel like, why can't I ever get anything done? Why am I not productive? Why can't, you know, I check off everything on my list every day. Um, do you have any processes or or suggestions or whatever for helping people figure out how to manage their own expectations for what they're actually able to get done with their illness. Absolutely. This is a big problem I have because I'm like a perfectionist and I, I start every day with a list and it is impossible to um, set certain goals for yourself that are too lofty. And for a while, when I was in grad school and I was really sick, that's what I was doing. And I would feel so bad like about myself at the end of the day because I'm like, I didn't get these things done. Oh my gosh, like, why am I even here? Why am I trying? So um, now I'm a little older, uh, I actually, I, I still write lists every day, but what I'll do is I'll put my most important things at the top of my list and I'll have a bottom part on the page that's just like, if I have time, but so um, I'll set a timer on my phone um, an hour at a time per project. So if I have to edit in the morning, I'm like, okay, I will set one hour on my phone to do editing. And then when that goes off, I'm going to do a different thing. So at least I'm getting one hour in on each of these things, or at least I'm putting specific time limits, like if I want to do two hours. But I've found that I get more done if I focus on one thing at a time, instead of just like going crazy and trying to do everything all like multitask, let me do this, let me do that, um, which is something I have issues <laughs> with anyway, because I'm just trying to get everything done at once. But I have found that setting a timer on my phone really helps me. Also taking an actual lunch, um, because I'm remote, I tend to just like work straight through the day and I don't even think about, oh, maybe I should feed myself. Um, so taking a break um actually i found makes me more productive because when i get back i feel a little like refreshed like okay i just have food i just like watched a tv show whatever now i can dive back in i'm not like overwhelmed with oh i've been editing for hours i've been writing this for hours or so that definitely helps yeah i that's a good idea i tend to sit and um eat my lunch while i'm at the computer um, I do a lot of editing too. I'll edit novels and, um, and I have, uh, I have four kids and I homeschool them. So they're at home. So like when they're eating lunch, they're off eating lunch. I'm like, okay, I can sit down and eat my lunch for 30 minutes and do some editing. Cause I can't really write when they're, um, awake because they interrupt me too much, but I can manage to edit. So yeah, those are some good ideas. I try to think, like I mentioned the spell slot thing earlier. It's like I try to sit and really seriously think, what am I actually capable of doing? So let's say, like I said, I have two to three spell slots a day and I know one of them 
every day is going to get taken by cooking, right? I have to cook dinner. There are five other people in this house that have to have dinner for me. So, you know, I know that that's going to happen. So that means that for the day I get like one or two other things that I can do. And so then I sit and I'm like, well, okay, here are the deadlines for this thing. Um, you know, I'm almost finished with this thing. And then I just kind of figure out and be like, okay, so today I'm just going to aim to get this one or two things done. And then if I manage to get anything else done, then that was really great. And that's a bonus. And then I can feel great about myself because I accomplished something. But that way I'm not getting in bed at the end of the day and just having this long list. Like, well, I didn't do this and I didn't do this and I didn't do this and I didn't finish this. And um, I'm very, I guess I'm very ambitious because even now I really have to fight to be like, no, two things on that list. Nothing more than two things on that list. Because I know I won't get more than that done, but I want to get more than that done. So sometimes be like, well, I'll just add this in and, and try for it. But that is my expectation. It's just or my, my advice for managing expectations is make a list and be, you know, very generous to yourself in the list and maybe err on the side of only requiring yourself to get a couple things done and then viewing the rest as bonus. Yeah, totally. And I give you major props, like having four children, that is, that is such a responsibility. And the fact that you're still putting so much into your writing and into your passion is so cool. I love that because many people, when they have children, of course, their children are their lives and they kind of don't make time for their passion because they think that they cannot. But sometimes you can make time for yourself and I'm so glad that you're doing that. Oh, thank you. That's, <laughs> that's nice to hear because you know, the expectations I hold myself to are not always, <laughs> are not always possible, but thank you on that. Um, so do you have any tips for, now we've talked about managing expectations of what you can actually get done. And then do you have any tips for productivity um, for maybe helping people increase the amount they manage to get done when they're sitting down and able to work? Um, well, I've noticed that actually just sitting in one spot is not something I love to do. Obviously, when I'm in pain, I <laughs> sit in my bed to work. But on days when I am feeling like, okay, I'm going to get a lot done today, I actually go from like coffee shop to coffee shop, but I'm like in New York. so. Um, I can do that. But um, when I'm visiting my parents, they live in North Carolina. So I actually have to drive so far just to get to a <laughs> coffee shop. So um, for me, I think it's all about like movement. Like if I'm sitting down for more than three hours, I start to feel like sluggish or like I don't want to do this anymore. So I'll literally just get up and like stretch or do some like touch my toes, something like just get my body moving. Um, or I'll take my dog for a walk um, just so I have um, something to keep me, keep my body awake while I'm working. I found that I get more done instead of just sitting in one spot forever, if that makes sense. I don't know. I have to like yeah. wake myself up. <laughs> I really love working in coffee shops. I don't get to do it very much, which doesn't make sense that I would love that because I'm super introverted, but I like going out to coffee shops and sitting there and working. So, um, <clears throat> my productivity tips are, um, well, specifically for writing, I think you need to kind of have a plan, right? So if you know that I'm only going to be able to sit at this computer for two hours to work, whether it's because of your schedule or because, you know, that's all you can manage for the day is if you know that, okay, I'm writing this scene and these things have to happen in this scene, then that will really cut down on the amount of time that you're just kind of staring at the computer and not sure what to do and then help you use the time that you've got for working um, a lot better. And um, this is kind of a separate topic, but it's, I think it's really connected to the productivity is that, um, you are going to be a whole lot more productive if you take care of yourself than if you ignore all kinds of things just to try to push to get the work done. Um, because yeah. you're gonna burn out, 
the work isn't going to be as good. And, you know, some days for me, I just have to accept that today I'm not going to be able to write. I have to go take a nap. <laughs> like, I, and then maybe in the evening, you know, if I got a little bit, okay, I took a nap, I can go right now. But, you know, if I stayed up and didn't take that nap to be like, okay, well, I'm going to try and work these two hours instead, then, you know, I probably actually won't get any, I'll probably get something done, but not a lot. And then I won't have gotten a nap to help me feel better. I just read something on Twitter like yesterday about um, working remotely, not specifically with chronic illness, but just working remotely. And something I really loved is that the person said to make sure that you put on real clothes. So um, I will live in my pajamas, like switch from one pair of pajamas to another. But I have found like if I am just staying in my house and I'm not going um, to a coffee shop or somewhere where people can see me, um, actually showering and putting on like real clothes in the morning as though I'm going to work. Um, it helps because I don't feel, cause I feel like if I'm in my pajamas for like a week, I feel like I'm not getting done in anything done. Even though I am working, I just feel like more lazy, I guess, or more lethargic, just like, Oh, I'm just in my pajamas all day, every day. Maybe I should shower. Um, so when I read that, I was just like, yes, of course, because when I do get up, shower, put on something nice, I do feel more productive or I feel like I can do more or that I want to do more instead of just laying down, which would be nice. <laughs> yeah, I think that's definitely a thing. I have actually been, I hadn't, I didn't see the thing on Twitter, but I've been trying to do that some recently because I realized that like. I'm still in my pajamas and my kids are like this too right my kids are in their pajamas all day all of us are in our pajamas all day is it like it feels like I'm kind of just kind of half-hearted working on things and maybe it's easier to get distracted by Facebook because oh I'm just lounging at home in my pajamas I'm not doing anything in particular um, at least with me so I have been trying to do that and I don't really like it because I love it <laughs> in my PJs. Like, that is the benefit of working from home, right, is PJs. But, um, and I think mindset, you know, and we, we've kind of touched on this when we talk about managing expectations and that kind of thing, is like working out what mindset you need for you is really the, the biggest thing for um, trying to work and deal with chronic illness. And so if your mindset is just lounging around or or staying in bed longer or whatever because you're wearing pjs maybe you need to get up and get dressed and you know tabitha and i can't tell you what that answer is for you but it's something you should maybe sit and think about like what kind of mindset do i need to have to manage my life with this illness and then you can start to figure out little tricks like changing into real clothes or taking a lunch break or something like that that can help you accomplish what you want to while you're dealing with all of the issues from your illness. Absolutely. I think um, these things may sound like so small, but I feel like the difference it makes is, is so much, like so big, just um, taking a shower or taking a, a real lunch break, I think can make just a world of difference. But as you said, it is so different for each individual and everybody's different jobs and what they do. So um, I'm always telling my readers that they, I call them endo visuals because it's all about endometriosis, but um, it's so important to not look at somebody else's Instagram caption or something and see how, oh, this is working so well for them and it's not working for me. It's more about thinking what will work for me. And I tried these things, not it's not working for me. I should give up. Yes, definitely. Um, so I love social media, but I think you know, talking about mindset, you really have to be careful with that. Even with people that have the exact same chronic illness as you is looking at what they're doing and then what is wrong with me that I can't manage to do this? What is wrong that this is working for them and not for me? 
maybe I should just give up. Like I follow, um, I follow someone on Instagram that also has PCOS and she is like super hyper organized, like bookshelves arranged by color, has everything written in her day planner, is, you know, knows what she's making for dinner for the month. And, and so, so, so I really have to, when I look at her, be like, well, this is what she did to adapt to her illness. Like she needed to have the planning. She needed to be super type A about it. And that's not me. So, you know, if I can't manage to do all the things that she can do in the way that she does them, that's not a problem with me. I just have to figure out what works for me instead. Yes, absolutely. It's so important because while uh, social media can be great for community, yes, it can cause you to go to a very negative place. And it's just, I think we all have to remind ourselves. Hey, baby. Take it to daddy, okay? We can use the hot glue gun and fix it. Okay, can you close the other door too? Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> that was so cute. <laughs> her little pony, her little pony's tail broke. And Aww. <laughs> see <it> so, <laughs> so um, I'm a little bit talking off the top of my head here, but since we're talking about figuring out what works for you is, you know, you can do this, keep track of it in any way that you need. Like you can find an app, there's like task apps or reminder apps or whatever you can do a notebook or I tend to not be super organized and just email myself stuff <laughs> like oh I'm thinking this so I'm gonna put it in, in the email subject and email it to me and then leave it in my inbox until I remember to look at it so I don't forget it but um I think it's worthwhile if you have a chronic illness to spend you know don't don't change anything that you're doing at first and then just spend like a couple weeks really keeping track of you know your symptoms um your energy levels how your normal schedule works like and and just keep track of it and then you can look at it and you'll actually have the information um kind of aggregated from a couple of weeks to know that this is the way things tend to work for you and then if you know that you can start thinking about and figuring out a schedule that is going to work best for you. And what works for me is not going to work for other people. So, you know, I know that, okay, on Tuesdays, I have to go do this thing in the morning, almost every Tuesday, and it really wears me out. So Tuesday afternoons, I'm going to have to take a nap. So I'm going to have no expectation for myself to do anything on Tuesday, Tuesdays, right? So, um, and then sometimes I work in the evening at two, on Tuesdays after my kids go to bed, but removing this idea that, no, I can't take a nap and I have to squeeze in as much work as I can possibly get on Tuesdays, um, has let me actually be more productive because I'm not getting upset about that or being obsessive over how much work I am or am not getting done specifically on Tuesdays. And I think you know, you have to work with what you've got and you can keep doing what you want, you know, to try and make your symptoms better, to try and be more productive. But if you work with yourself, then it is automatically going to make you more productive and make your work easier for you. So if you take the time to figure out how the rhythms of you and your schedule and your life are actually working, then you can kind of optimize for that. Yes, I am like a spreadsheet queen. I have spreadsheets for literally everything. And my mom thinks it is like neurotic. She is just like always making jokes about my spreadsheets, like literally everything. But I have so many spreadsheets and I have like little digital sticky notes all over my computer. And even with my team, I'll use Trello or Monday for them just so they can see everything. So for me, I like to have everything like categorized in a list where I can see it. And um, I'll have like reminders set on my phone. So I think it's super important to kind of just organize yourself however you can, even if your mom thinks it's neurotic and just whatever works for you is so important. Um, 
because sometimes spreadsheets make people, um, I don't know, nervous or anxious, but I like to have everything there. It's, it's just how I have to have things. Yeah, I think some people get weirded out by spreadsheets, and the answer to that is, is then they shouldn't use spreadsheets. But if it works for you, then it works for you. So, um, and I get, so I think I will go into the last topic on this, and that, and we've talked about this a little bit, like, in the sense of just taking a nap or something like that. Um, I think it's really important not to forget to take care of yourself. And that it's also okay that with a chronic illness, the things that you have to do to take care of yourself is, are um, more time consuming and take more time away from the work that you're trying to do than regular people um, who don't have a chronic illness might need. And that's another thing that's really personal, right? Like some people would love to go out to the salon or go out with their friends, but being an introvert, that's not what I want to do. So you kind of have to make sure that you, and this, and even more than just a self-care, like I have to um, I have to take naps. Maybe not everybody with chronic illness has to take naps, but I take naps like at minimum three or four days a week. And sometimes more than that if I, if I can, managed to make it work um and that it you know it's it's a marathon not a speed race right it might be frustrating that you're moving slower than other people or not you know in my case i write books so maybe i'm not putting out as many books as i should be um but you know it's better just to take it slower than to end up totally burned out and quitting because i didn't take care of myself I think this is so important, especially um, when it comes to your personal relationships, because I find myself, um, if I just focus on work and that's it, and I don't do anything for me, and I don't leave the house or anything, and I'm just working, 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 I will actually just become so irritated and get in so many fights with my husband. And it's not even because of anything he's doing. It's just because I'm like, oh, I'm stuck in this box. I'm working all day. Like, and that has nothing to do with him, right? Like, I'm doing this to myself. I could go outside and do things, but instead, I'm working on Do You Endo, or I'm working on my job, or I'm writing extra articles because I need to to constantly do all these things. Um, but for me, like, I think it's so important to get my hair done at least once a month, because if I don't, I feel like, wow, I'm just not even, I don't even care anymore. <laughs> like, you know, like that... Um, a long time ago, they had that appliance commercial and the guy's like talking to a stove or something and he's like, you really let yourself go. And that's just how I feel when I don't like go get my hair done or go get my nails done because those are things I really love to do. And it may sound like um, frivolous or stupid, but when you're inside the house all the time and you never, if you don't go to coffee shops or whatever, like and you're always inside just working, it just becomes so, um, I'm trying to think of like the perfect word for it. I don't want to say like isolating, but it's just, you know, it's sad when you're, when, when you can't work on things for yourself. Like I like to take baths sometimes so I can just sit and relax. I like to get my hair done. I like to get my nails done. I like to go out to eat. So, um, I think focusing on things that really make you feel human. Um, so anything that makes you feel human that you can do, don't feel bad for doing it because I will go out sometimes and be like, I should really be at home working right now. And it's just not healthy to think that way. And in your mind, you probably think that, oh, well, if I was working right now, I'd be so much more productive. Like I, you know, this is going to help my productivity. But in reality, when you're working yourself working your body harder than you should, or you're not taking time to really take care of yourself, your quality goes down and you work. So um, I think that's just something to think about when it comes to quantity and quality. And should you really be home working or should you have this dinner? Like, you know? Yeah, I found with me specifically, um, 
recently and all of this is like you really just have to pay attention to yourself and kind of observe and figure out what's going on um, for you because if you just kind of go through the motions then you might be going through the motions of something that's really not um, a good idea for you in that I was spending a lot of time working at the computer during the day but then I realized that like a lot of that time I was kind of like thinking about other things, not really getting a lot of work done, just kind of staring at the computer. So I not only wasn't getting what I needed to done or getting enough done because I was trying to work too much, then I also felt like all I was doing was working. Like I'm at the computer all day, but I'm not getting very much done. And so very recently I've just started to try and put rules on myself. Like I don't work on Friday nights and this is not specifically a chronic illness thing, It, but it can be. I think it's a lot harder when you feel like, um, okay, today I'm feeling good. So I should really just go and get a lot of work done. Um, is this, what's really hard about working from home or working for yourself is like, where is the line between when am I supposed to be working and when is it okay for me to be doing something fun without feeling guilty about it? Um, so, you know, I just, I kind of make rules for myself, I guess, to try and, to try and counter this. So I'm like, okay, Friday nights, it's Friday night. I don't work. Like, it's totally fine. I really like to play video games. So Friday nights, most Friday nights, I put my kids to bed and then I'm going to play video game. I'm not going to edit. I'm not going to, you know, look at covers. I'm not going to write for myself, even though I enjoy it. It's like, I have to give myself the space to do this, or I feel like I'm supposed to be working all the time, especially because I feel like, um, even though I try not to be this way about myself, that I'm not getting enough done because I took four naps this week. So instead of hanging out and playing video games on Friday night, I should be writing because I didn't write all these other hours during the week because I had to take a nap. So I think that's such an important point like because I do the same thing instead of taking naps I sleep in really late like absurdly late and then I work late because I slept in so late um and I'm always like telling myself it's so bad that I slept so late but um I just have to remember like okay my body is like literally attacking itself and if I don't take care of myself, then I can't work anyway. So had I gotten up at 5.30 or whatever, um, I probably wouldn't have gotten anything done if I was awake. So I think it is important to just like be easy on yourself because um, that's something I really, I struggle with um, anyway, just because I'm constantly you shouldn't have slept so late or you, you should be doing this. So it's, I think that is so important just to think about. <laughs> yeah, I think so. It's easier than ever now. Um, I mean, still most people, you know, tend to work to nine to five, but there are so many more options for the way you can work. Um, especially if you're something like a writer, you can work freelance, you can do all of this that, and I'm the worst about this, right? I am super sensitive um, and I really try not to be, but things hurt my feelings really easy. And, you know, like someone else's life is not gonna work for you. And it doesn't matter what they think about it. My husband and I tend to take a lot of flack from his family because we do, I mean, I say we sleep late and we have kids, so it's not like we're sleeping super late. But, you know, we um, work late at night and he still has a day job so he works late on our publishing business and then gets up and goes to his day job but we tend to sleep later than everybody else because we're staying up later than everyone else and then there's this this kind of assumption that if you don't get up at 5 a.m and work the way that everyone else works you're lazy and not productive and this isn't the way you should be and you should try to match yourself to everyone else get up at 5 a.m and do that work then because that's when you're supposed to be doing it but that really doesn't work for us and it sounds like it doesn't work for you um i know somebody else who gets up at 4 a.m so he can write until he goes into work at nine 
and then he goes to bed at like eight o'clock at night and that works for him and that's fine and I think where I'm going with this is that you really have to just not pay attention to what other people are saying you should do for yourself and do what you actually need to do for yourself and that's really hard for me because I feel like I'm getting criticized all the time for it or that I'm not matching conventions uh, and I guess the only answer to that is just to ignore it and then get to the point where you're not so sensitive which is what I'm trying to do but <laughs> oh my god it's still I'm, there I'm so happy you said this and first of all I am so sorry because the number one person or people who will make you feel bad about yourself is your family. And it's it terrible. It's terrible. You know, you would think your friends would make you feel bad before your family does. But um, just growing up in like a Southern ideology, you know, people do get up at 530, you know, and they work all day and then, you know, you come home. And like, so I totally get where you're coming from about, um, you know, your family saying that you stay up too late or that you sleep in too much because my, uh, my mother-in-law tends to do the same thing to me. And um, I just tell myself she doesn't understand what I'm going through. She She's never had these issues before. Like I have to constantly tell myself these things like, Tabitha, she does not know. She does not know. She has not felt this way. <laughs> but it's so important, um, especially when it comes to family, to not take it so personal because I – take it so personal and it's um it's so unhealthy it's so toxic because then you'll end up being so mad with yourself but um I can just say like just keep reminding yourself that they don't know and that everybody is different and you know while they may have the normal nine to five or whatever so many people don't have a nine to five now and work is so different for so many people and um, especially with older family members, you know, they just, that's how they grew up. And, um, like a lot of people in my family are just like, well, if I was sick, I'd walk to work in the snow. Like, you know, just, they, they don't understand. And I think it's important just to be like, you know what, this person does not understand. And I'm just going to have to leave it at that. They don't understand what I'm going through. And it's so hard to just sit there and say that to yourself. But if you don't, you're just going to replay what they said to you in your head over and over again, or at least that is what I do specifically. And it's not good. <laughs> yeah. And so this may or may not actually be true. And I'm not trying to advocate just like dealing with people who are actually being toxic to you this way. But I really try to think of it in that, you know, you said it's not first late most of the time they don't mean it as badly as you are taking it because you're already insecure about what you're having to deal with with your chronic illness and so if you can really just like they don't understand they're not meaning to hurt my feelings like this then it will be so much i think easier mentally for um you to just deal with it because i don't think in most cases like the people who say it with us really mean it that way they just understand like these were the rules for what you did to be a productive human being and you're not fitting into them and it confuses them and not even so much that they're trying to take it out on you and then that can help you know because like we said family can be really difficult to deal with on it and then but they still love you and most of the time i don't think they're actually trying to make you feel as bad as you end up feeling over it so if you can kind of give them that grace then it gives you the grace to just kind of just forget about it and not obsess over it so much as if like they're making passing judgment on your entire life um just because of some comment they made once about how you're always sleeping so late <laughs> yeah totally i definitely get because i'll get like um because we work on our computers and you know they'll ask oh are, are you working or like I don't know. Yeah, you're totally right. I do take it like so personally, but you're so right about just, I need to just let it go. <laughs> well, I'm totally throwing stones in a glass house here because I'm saying that to everyone else, but I'm not always the best about actually doing it. So, um, 
Okay, um, so I think we've had a really good conversation and I'm going to open it up kind of wide. Is there, if you had one bit of advice um, that is something we maybe haven't covered or maybe we have and you just want to go into more detail about it for someone who wants to write with chronic illness, what would you tell them? Um, I think the main theme here is to be kind to yourself. Um, writing is such is a profession where you are criticized constantly um, by your editors, you know, maybe even by your readers, depending on uh, what type of writing you do. And I just think it's important to take feedback. Um, not with a grain of salt, but just knowing that people, your editors or whoever are trying to help you and to remember not to beat yourself up because you did or did not do something one day or you you didn't write as much as your favorite writer did or you're, you don't have a book deal yet or, you know, um, comparison is, is the worst thing you can do, especially when everybody's life is so different and I just think it's so important to care for yourself and because it sounds so like simple just coming out but the more you value yourself the more your um, employees will see your quality go up just everything so I think just the most important thing is to care for yourself yeah I think that has been the overarching theme is taking care of yourself and then really figuring out things for yourself specifically. Um, because Tabitha, Tabitha and I, sorry, both have a certain kind of like, I don't know, I would say a female chronic illness. So what we're going to have to do for ourselves is going to be way different than someone else who has depression and someone else who has something like, like, lupus or chronic pain or even a different kind you know just straight up chronic fatigue and so you know we're trying to give some overarching tips for dealing with your illness while you're trying to do something like writing which is you know not as easy to do as <laughs> some people might think it is so well thank you tabitha for coming on to talk to me um if you want to you know, reintroduce yourself and talk about your project again so everyone can know where to go find you after this interview. That would be great. Thank you so much for having me. It's been, um, I think this conversation has been great. Um, and I really hope that someone listens to it and thinks, you know, I never thought about that and I'm going to do it now. Um, but I am, like I said, I'm the founding editor in chief of Do You Indo, and that's exactly how it sounds, spelled exactly how it sounds. And all of our handles are Do You Endo on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Um, we do not have Snapchat, and we will not have Snapchat. But um, <laughs> I'm always here, especially for writers. Um, I I'm a managing editor for a content creation SEO company, so. Even if you uh, need a writing job, I'm always hiring, so. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks. And then and you guys will know me, but I'm Morgan Newquist, and I'm head editor and owner of Silver Empire Publishing. I write superhero and urban fantasy novels, um, which you can find on Amazon. And we also just started our Silver Empire book club, and I will put the link to that in the show notes if you want to go look. It works kind of like Audible, where you join in on a monthly or annual subscription and you get credits, and then you can use those credits to buy um, books on our website that um, we have available. Uh, so it's kind of a way to get your books straight through us instead of always having to go through Amazon. And uh, we will be back next week with some more writing tips, marketing tips, that kind of thing for running your personal author business. Thank you for joining us.